Good evening. We bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Paulo De Rosario. And we give you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Billy Capistrano. In tonight's Game Plan. We'll break down some of the biggest headlines this week in the NBA with scorching hot takes for our weekly roundup. Then our Philippine Ascos, Patrick Reichelt and Sandro Reyes, join us to talk about their biggest takeaways from their recent AFF Suzuki Cup stint. And we'll check in with Cece Rondina as she shares her experience from Typhoon Odette. Buckle up, sports fans. Let's get in the game. Now, the past week saw some of the most exciting action across the NBA in the regular season. From record-breaking moments, game winners, and inspiring comebacks, it's time for our NBA Weekly Roundup Hot Takes Edition. Joining us for this discussion tonight is three-time UAAP champion and NBA hype analyst, Tyler Tio. Hello again, Tyler. Welcome back to the game. What's up? Hi, Billy. Hi, Pa. Thanks Hello. for having me. No worries. You know, I'm, I'm so happy you're ready and energized for this because I know it's new nap. Uh, yung situation mo ngayon. So, <laughs> let, let's, we let's work to here. That. Come on, no, no bro, I'm, I just had to. There's no shoes behind you today, so we had to do it. All right, Billy, let's get going. All right, Tyler, let's start things off with the biggest news that everybody has been talking about. Wala mm. akong kilala na hindi nagpost nito sa kanilang social media. Instagram, Twitter was flooded with this news. Anyway, Steph Curry breaking the all time three point record, and the game's hot take is Steph Curry's record will never. Never be broken in the NBA, and that's on period. Oh. What are your thoughts? Mm, I, nah, I disagree with that. I think it will be broken because I don't think the NBA will move away from shooting more threes. So the next generation of talent will definitely have even more volume in terms of three-point attempts. And whether or not they're better than Steph, I don't know. But just on volume alone, I think someone will eventually you know, take over the spot. I absolutely agree with that. I think uh, with the rate like the guys are shooting in right now, you look at guys like Trey Young, they, they just mm -hmm. keep on shooting from beyond the arc, uh, higher than the numbers that even Steph Curry did when he started out in the NBA. So the game has changed, and I think that's the reason why that record will be reached. The only untouchable records, in my opinion, assists and steals of John Stockton because they're just too big, yeah. too much, too much. All right, Bill, let's go. All right, next one this week, the LA Lakers received some bad news with Anthony Davis sidelined with yet another injury. So our second hot take is, Tyler, Anthony Davis will never be a top five player in the NBA again because of his injury problems. And I can see Pao in my peripheral vision <laughs> not agreeing with this, or agreeing with this rather. What are your thoughts? Uh, yes. Well, Pao knows I'm a Laker fan, yeah. so I got to trust in my boy AD. So I think that's not true. Just wait till 2022. I think uh, he definitely hasn't been the same since they won the chip. But I think sooner rather than later, he's going to get back to that level. So he's do you, trust Laker fans. So do you actually think that Anthony Davis was a top five player in the first place? That's my other question here. Because, you know, I would ar I could argue that even their championship year, he might, he might have been on the bubble of entering top five and not a definite choice for top five. He was definitely in the conversation before, especially in 2020. But right now, he's definitely not in that top yeah. five conversation. So, yeah. Oof. All right, all right. I got into a fight with a writer about that just a while ago. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on. Let's not talk about let's that. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Ken, I'm looking at you. All right, moving on. As we all know, COVID protocols have continued to hinder the Brooklyn Nets. And Kyrie Irving's return was cut short even before it began. So our hot take number three is... Medyo controversial, Kyrie Irving will never suit up for the Brooklyn Nets ever again. Hmm. Nah, I don't think so. I mean, they just they just allowed him to play away games, right, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So, I think he's bound to play for them. It's just unfortunate that he had to enter the health and safety protocols like 30 minutes after they announced that. But I'm sure he'll be back for the Nets soon. You know, that's really interesting because, yes, uh, he he was, you know, they asked him to come back to play away games because of the restrictions there in New York. Mm -hmm. But then he entered COVID-19 uh, protocols, health and safety protocols in the NBA again. And because of his status as an unvaccinated player, he needs to have five negative tests going mm -hmm. into an actual game. Now, considering the situation in the United States right now, I'm not sure if that's going to happen this particular season. But... If we go beyond this season, I have more hope of Kyrie Irving coming back. It will be a bit difficult. It's going to be a rough road for the 
Brooklyn Nets. But my my question to you here, Tyler, with regards to to uh, the Nets in particular, I know that they want to keep a foot. That's why they want to get Kyrie Irving back. But do they actually need Kyrie Irving back to make it to the promised land in the playoffs with this current roster that they had, assuming that the COVID-19 situation with the Brooklyn Nets is a bit better? Uh, I think they do need Kyrie because, I mean, KD and Harden obviously are great players, but when it comes to the playoffs, you can never have too many, you know, offensive options. And I think Kyrie will give them that extra dynamic playmaker that they'll sorely need, especially when defenses start to tighten up during the playoffs. Now, Tyler, what can you say about the trade rumors concerning Irving and Porzingis? Uh, <laughs> I mean, room, rumors are just rumors, so I'm not going to say anything Would you do it, though? That. Would you do it? Ooh, if I were the Nets, I might. I might think about it because, you know, they're in win-now mode. So if they want to win now, you'd rather have Porzingis who can help you right now, who can man the middle, uh, he can give you that extra shooter at the five position to open up uh, the court for KD and Harden. So kind of makes sense. All right, all right. So let's see whether your GM prophecies could come true or, or not. I don't know. All right, Billy, let's go. All right, so obviously things not looking too good for the Brooklyn Nets, which leads us to our last hot take, Tyler. The Bulls will have the best record ah. in the Eastern Conference. What are your thoughts? Uh, I, I'm super impressed with what the Bulls are doing, but I don't think that's going to happen. I still mm -hmm. think it's either the Nets or the Bucks who will end up with the top seed. But, you know, like I said, the Bulls have been amazing. I didn't expect them to be this good this early and the Rosen and Levine were playing at insane levels I mean obviously before all the health and safety protocol stuff but yeah I don't think they're gonna be the top seed just yet all right so just for everyone's context right now at the moment the Chicago Bulls are 19 and 10 just a couple of games behind the Brooklyn Nets who are 21 and nine and uh you know I'm, I'm actually looking at this it's actually with the teams with 19 wins or the cleveland cavaliers and the milwaukee bucks so all the cleveland fans out there are saying hey don't forget about us <laughs> but when you look at how the bulls are performing right now i'm gonna i want to bring up a quote from a uh, coach yang Yao here in the pba when he said you're only as good as your last rt pcr test is <laughs> their success in your opinion dependent on the health status of themselves and of the people around the east for sure, for sure. I think that's the case for most NBA teams right now. I mean, whoever has, you know, most of their players available is definitely going to have the upper hand. And it's it's unfortunate, but that's the situation we're in right now with the COVID, yeah. uh, with the worldwide crisis of COVID. So whoever has, uh, you know, the more careful players, the luckier players, and if they're available, they're going to have the upper hand for sure. All right, uh, just one really quick question here. Yes or no, are the Bulls back? Oh yeah, my goodness, I don't think they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ty, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Ty. I don't know whether or not the Bulls fans will be happy with you or not, but thank you very much. All right, thanks, guys. After the break, our Philippine Askels, Patrick Reichelt and Sandra Reyes, join us to talk about their biggest takeaways from their AFF Suzuki Cup stint. Stay tuned for watching the game. Welcome back to the game. I'm Paolo De Rosario. Our Philippine Ascos ended their AFF Suzuki Cup campaign with a 3-2 victory over Myanmar. 
Now the interesting about our squad is the mixture of veterans and young guns and we surely have some promising talent coming up for the future. Now speaking of that mix tonight, we are joined by two of our very own Philippine Ascals, veteran Patrick Reichel Kiki and the up and coming Sandro Reyes, whose nickname I cannot mention here on not air safe, according to safe. Kiki. So uh, gentlemen, welcome to the game. Kiki, I want to start off with you. A bit of a different situation in the Suzuki Cup uh, in Singapore. A uh, bit of a bubble situation, not ideal preparations because of the travel, the pandemic going on. Could you describe your experience here with the team? I mean, it's always good. Every camp is nice to see the boys and all, but coming to a major tournament like the Suzuki Cup, you know, you would wish for having a better preparation. And it's always been like this major event every two years, you know. Um, other teams had the, the luxury of, of being together for a longer time and having recent camps, but with all the, the COVID, COVID mess happening right now, that's the best we could have done, you know, and then, I mean, you have to work with what you have, you know. Now, how about you, Sandra? How was that experience like and what were your biggest takeaways from that tournament, especially because you're just 18 years old. You're just a child, Sandro. years old, cannot believe it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was my first time, obviously, to be part of the team, and uh, I was dreaming of this moment since I was like six. And just the, the boys, the veterans especially, they were just so welcoming. They made my time easy most of the time. Uh, they most made my time there in Singapore easy. They always helped me out whenever I needed it, um, gave me compliments, gave me criticism. criticism. So i just really grateful to the whole team, to the whole staff for really welcoming me into the team. Sandro, can you describe the leadership of uh, Kiki, Rachel? Uh, like you mentioned praise and criticism. How did he criticize you? Uh, criticize? I, I'm not sure if it was Kiki um, specifically. <laughs> I'm a good guy. Yeah. I'm one of the good veterans. Yeah. I'm a good, good guy. I mean, even after my debut, I didn't do that good. Uh, he was just full of compliments, so he was congratulated for my day too. Uh, so yeah, from Kiki, I don't think he criticized me at any at any time. He's he's a great leader. I think he deserved to, to really uh, wear the armband for the last game. You can see it in the past tournaments, even where his passion, his commitment to the Philippine national team is just so high. Well, Kiki. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Kiki, perfect. I was gonna say now you can criticize him, but Billy's got something for you. Yeah, Kiki, how about Sandra? What can you say about his potential with, with the Ascals? I mean, before the camp, I've been hearing already um, words about him. and He's just 18 and it's incredible the confidence he already has in the training or the way he was um, he integrated himself to the team from day one. He does, he's not afraid to make jokes or something with the old boys. And I mean, when I was 18, there's no chance I had this kind of confidence you know and the boy is just growing you know he's like has a couple of years more he already has a very good athletic um body shape and it's just mm -hmm. gonna get better mm -hmm. i think it's it's good to have him already now with the team so he's gonna learn even more and there's a lot lot more to to come from him i promise Kiki, you know, you're, he's not the only young player that was part of that team. A lot of the, a lot of the squad actually came from the ADT, the Ascals Development Team. Can you talk a bit about, you know, the youth that you, the team had, the potential that the team had? Because it feels like there was a stretch where the team was just full of veterans, and now all of a sudden, all these young kids are out there. They might, they might have TikTok, Kiki. <laughs> I don't think you have TikTok, so tell, tell us about the what, young kids there. That? No, um, I mean, it makes me feel older, definitely. You know. <laughs> It does uh, make me realize that I'm a veteran now. You know, we had a lot of a lot of players um, canceling last minute, last second, coming like with injuries or maybe COVID uh, problems, visa problems. You know, it's a negative. But if you take the positive, is that we were able to bring all those young players with us, having a nice first experience. Nice, it's 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 a major tournament, Suzuki Cup. For them to to be with us will help them in the future, definitely. Sandro, this group, as I mentioned a while ago, had a lot of young players in it, and yet it felt like you were always in the game against Singapore, against Thailand, and knowing that you now know what, now know what it takes to reach that level, how, how do you think this Suzuki Cup will help you in your own personal development in the future? 
Um, I think that the Suzuki Cup and the whole experience um, is really going to help me because it was just, um, my first time really to play with, with men. You know, before this tournament, I was usually just playing um, youth competitions. So it's, it's a really big step up to play youth to men um, right away. So I think it, it, was, it was really important for me to take this step uh, right now, especially at 18, because that's when most players make the step from youth to, to the senior competitions yeah and uh, again that step is big uh, the gap is uh, a lot bigger from playing with guys your age to guys as old as Kiki so uh, Kiki <laughs> when you look <laughs> <laughs> no but Kiki this this group as we mentioned a while ago had to go through tough times and yet you played teams that were a lot more prepared uh, especially those guys uh, in, in Thailand and in Singapore in those particular games 100%. What does it say? What does it say about the level of this team that you actually were close to beating those teams, even with relatively almost a, just a week of preparation? Yeah, there's so much positives to take out. Yeah, I know. I said, like, it would have been a total different ball game, for example, if we would have met Singapore maybe more to, to the end of the group stage, because at the end you, you'll feel that there was more chemistry. We would be training every day, and. The first game, which was very crucial against Singapore, we've been together maybe for, for three. There were players coming in one day before. Three, I, I mean, we, we dominated them in the second half. We switched off for three, four minutes, in the, uh, and then they scored two goals. But I, I'm pretty sure if we would have just a little bit more time with the quality and in, in, in the individuals we have, um, chemistry would just come eventually and we'll have an even better chance. But I'm still proud for what we have to, uh, achieved, you know, the games, everything was close. We were so close to draw Thailand and I feel like we had, would have deserved a point against Singapore for sure also. Absolutely. And, you know, before we let you guys go, Kiki, what's next for you guys? How excited are you for the 2023 Asian Cup qualifiers? You want to go first? No, oh, Kiki, yeah. no, you first, you first. We, we asked oh. you. Oh, ah, okay, okay, sure, sure. Um, I mean, I, hopefully there's a lot, lot to come next. You know, like you said, I'm old, but it's just the number. You know, I feel very good. So um, now I'm just gonna focus on on going back to Thailand, mm -hmm. um, and then we we'll have the the qualifiers in June. And um, I think if if now with having the young boys coming closer and the boys from Europe having a better chance, and I'm very confident that. Um, the Asia Cup is very, very possible for us. It would be very cool to qualify another time now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Sandro, of course, uh, right now that you got a taste of your of uh, international action, you made your debut, what would it mean to you to actually find a way to fight your way into that squad going into the Asian Cup qualifiers? I mean, it would, it would mean so much. I watched the last Asian Cup 2019 from our living room. So just to witness it um, firsthand, would, it would be a dream come true, of course. Um, but it's going to be really tough, of course, to get into the squad. Uh, there are a lot of players who weren't able to make it, who are playing in top leagues in, around Asia and Europe. So, yeah, I'm going to have to fight for a spot, and it's not going to be easy. We're excited to see that fight from you, Sandro, uh, and excited for your future. Kiki, I'm sorry we made you feel old. We don't mean that. You no, look very, no, no. You we're, look, the, we're the same age. You look as young as Sandro, all right? You're good. You're good. Yes, we're friends again. All right, there you go. Kiki, Sandro, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. No, thank you for having us. Thank you. Now, when we return, we'll check in with Cece Rondina as she shares her experience from Typhoon Odette. Keep it here. You're watching the game.
watching the game. Typhoon Odette devastated millions of Filipinos all over the country, especially in the Visayas and Mindanao. Beach Volleyball National Team player Cece Rondina experienced the hard-hitting winds of Odette as she was back in her hometown in Cebu. Cece joins us tonight from Cebu. Cece, salamat sa pagsama sa amin tonight at panatag ang loob naming ligtas kayo ng pamilya mo. Good evening po. Thank you po Good evening. for uh, opportunity na uh, ma-reach um, uh, itong the next talk. Now, Cece, uh, before anything else, siyempre, kamusta ka na at kamusta yung sitwasyon dyan sa inyo? Um, actually, honestly po, okay naman po yung uh, family ko po, yung akin po. Mm -hmm. Ginawa ko tong, ginawa ko tong um, donation po because yung lola ko, kapatid ng papa ko, like, apat, apat sila, at mga kasin ko po, wipe out po talaga yung bahay nila. Mm -hmm. And yung lugar na yun po, doon po kami nagsimula. Doon po ako, um, doon po ako lumaki. Baga-baga doon kami sinula. Doon. And then, ayun, uh, di namin yung next break kasi di po talaga kami, like parang, ah, wala, maghinay lang yan. Kasi sa dami ba naman, bagyo na, um, na maranasan namin. Di namin mm -hmm. next break, na ganun sa kalakas. Yeah. And then, umabot po na nag-term search kasi malapit nga po kami sa dagat. So, lahat po ng bahay doon, wipe out, like wash out talaga. Hindi ko na sobrang um, bigat tingnan, sobrang sad tingnan kasi uh, alam mo yun, yung bahay niyo dati, wala na. Wala na siyang kano. Hindi mo na makikita yun. Yung kumbaga baka, ako na lang lahat makikita mo. And, ang gulo, magulo tingnan. Kaya, ayun. Uh, yun po yung um, reason bakit po ako nagpa-fundraising ngayon for the house. Kahit mga hero at saka bubong lang, okay na may masilungan lang sila sa uh, Christmas nila ngayon. Uh, yeah, Sisi, nakita namin yung mga efforts mo in terms of uh, donation drives and, and all of that. Can you, can you describe to us anong kailangan ng mga tao doon? What you need in particular at uh, how can people reach you to donate any help? Actually, actually po, um, kausap ko po lagi si Ate Kim Chu. And then, siya na po yung sumagot sa yero and sa pabubong. Actually, kaka-update ko lang kasi may signal na ngayon. And then, ang ginawa ko po, sobrang mahirapan po kasi ako kasi uh, yung fan ko po, almost 150 pa, 200 lang po. And then, yung yero, umabot po sa... Uh, umabot po sa... 115,000 po ata yung zero tsaka plywood. Hindi ko alam, biglang, biglang na, 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 nagmahal yung presyo. Pero okay lang kasi wala, eh, uh, nagmamadali na rin kami bilhin para, maka, para may masilungan din yung mga mm -hmm. um, pamilya po ng papa ko and mga bata doon. So, ayun po, nagpapasalamat ako kay Ati Tinsyo kasi tinulungan niya po talaga akong uh, sagutin yung yero tsaka yung mga plywood. And ang ginawa ko na lang po, yung the rest ng fundraising ko po is bumili pa ako ng bigas and mm -hmm. try ko pong bigyan lahat sana. Pero inuna ko po talaga yung mga nawala ng bahay. Like um, bigas, canned food, and sa mga uh, yung pang, pang Pasko po and pang New Year na rin sana. And tutulungan ko rin po yung mga volleyball na nasalanta rin po. Like Bim Bim and sa mga kasama niya, like sa family niya. Hmm. And sa mga sa teammate ko pa na nasa Cebu. Nag-release out lang. Pero ang hirap kasi walang signal po. Hmm. Pakalain niyo po umabot po po ako dito sa Bugo City. Napakalayo ako. Mga two hours away ako sa amin. And um, ayun, ginawa ko lang kasi may nakilala rin ako dito sa Bugo and ginawa niya rin po ako ng para na makapasok ako sa Bugo rin po. Baka, uh, para mapabilis po yung um, bilis po. Kaya, ayun po. Thank you. Well, si Sina mentioned mo nga itong si Dim Dim. Ah, kamusta siya, siya ngayon? Have you talked to her? At ano pa yung mga kailangan nila sa area nila? Hindi ko po, alam kasi di ko pa po, di, uh, di ko pa di, di ko pa po napuntahan. Mm -hmm. Actually, yung lugar nila. Pero ang alam ko po, kaka-text ko lang na kung ano yung kailangan niya. Ay, ay, ay. Ang gusto nyo lang is, matakain daw yung mga gwasa doon sa kanila. Kasi 
wala na dog food. Sabi ko, sige, after kong i-distribute lahat tong mga nabili ko or lahat ng mga uh, 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 ipapamigay ko to lahat. And then after this, uh, lahat ng mga sobra, ibibigay ko sa kanila and sa mga rest, the rest na rin po sa mga volleyball friends ko na nasa mm-hmm. lesta. So, ayan po. CC, maraming salamat uh, sa update mo. Obviously, we're very happy that you're okay, your entire family is okay, and hopefully, uh, you know, things start looking up there, especially uh, for the holiday season. Salamat, CC. Thank you. Thank you, Rinpo. Tulad ni CC, maraming sa mga kababayan natin ang nasalanta ng Bagyong Odet, ang walang makain, walang tubig, walang masisilungan, at nawala ng mahal sa buhay. Ipadaba po natin sa kanila ang diwa ng bayanihang Pilipino. Sa mga gustong tumulong, maaari kayong magmalasakit sa mga sumusunod na accounts sa inyong mga screen. Tuloy pa rin po ang Pasko para sa nasalanta ng Bagyong Adet. Meanwhile, the MVP Group of Companies together with its partners are in unity and spreading joy and hope this holiday season and you can be a part of this remarkable movement. This time, Barangay Matiktik, Norzagaray, Bulacan received a holiday surprise. Let's watch this. Isang masayang hapon ito para sa ating mga kababayan dito sa Norzagaray, Bulacan kasi apat na raan at tatlong pamilya ang magkakaroon na ng kanilang sariling kuryente sa kanilang bahay. At sa pagkakataon ito, mararanasan na nila ang mga benepisyo ng pagkakaroon ng sariling electric service mula sa Meralco dito sa Norzagaray. Actually, itong matiktik before is talagang wala silang kuryente. Ang in-address natin dito, yun nga, ma-minimize yung mga nag-illegal connection. And of course, syempre, mabigyan ng sariling mga metro yung ating mga kababayan dito sa matiktik. Thank you very much sa uh, One Meralco Foundation dahil hindi lamang liwanag ay binigay nyo sa aming mga kabarangay. Kung hindi, ngayong Kapaskuhan ay nagsagawa po kayo ng community service na kung saan ay nagpamahagi po kayo ng mga biyayang pamasko na alam natin na sa hirap ng panahon ngayon, lalo na at pandemya, ay nagkaroon sila ng extra handa. Congratulations po at mabuhay ang One Meralco Foundation sa ganitong adikain. Araw-araw naman talaga kailangan yung espiritu ng Pasko ay naibabahagi namin, lalong-lalo na na ang aming produkto, liwanag. Ang liwanag laging nakakonekta sa Kapaskuhan. So para sa amin, itong pagbibigay serbisyo sa ating mga kababayan at yung pagmamalasakit at pagbabayanihan ay laging nananatili sa aming gawain. Dito ka, Nars, sa Baray Bulacan, tuloy pa rin ang Pasko! Let's do our part and spread the Christmas cheer to our fellow kababayans. You may send your donations to the accounts flashed on your screen, or you can contact us on the following details. Tara na sa isang maligayang bayanihan, Pilipino! Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Billy Capistrano. I'm Paolo Rosario, and this has been The Game.